Today's session was long and somewhat eventful, so buckle up. It all starts with me tackling the three sentinel fight, or or as I call him, the gold horse guy. Mostly because I was near there and thought, why not try it? I have enough mana now to summon my boy Engval, so I do that. Then, in my first try, I attempt to fight on horseback. It's a very sad and embarrassing first attempt, though. Upon dying, I noticed that I had almost a thousand runes, so I decide maybe it's better to salvage those first. So I get them and go buy another cookbook at the Church of Elle. I can now make holy water bombs, which I think scale with fate, so that's good. Unfortunately, I don't have any sunflowers, so I only really could make a couple of them. Again, my ideology is to use consumables immediately, so I try to do that, but literally miss most of them. I have a honestly terrible time navigating the environment on the horse, because there's so many rocks around, so in my third attempt I try fighting on foot. Engvall is useful at distracting horse guy and we managed to do some damage this time but Angval eventually dies and I'm not used to the horse guy's attacks at all especially the shield the shield bashes that have a hitbox of the size of like a planet come on look at this this is just bullshit the attempt was good though uh, I then try summoning the wolves but they were pretty useless and I start this trend of just missing my attacks which is a uh, incredibly frustrating. In any case, I die. I have now discovered how to two-hand weapons by googling it. I don't know if I missed the tutorial in the starting area, but I don't like that I had to google it because I had no idea if I could even do it. But let's be honest, even with two hands, my spear is pretty pathetic and doesn't do enough damage. I obviously go back to summoning Engval, though he always dies at around the halfway uh, of the boss's health bar. I try using my shield a bit more this time and I keep trying to uh, charge attack to stagger him and I get so close this time before he kills me with his stupid shield again. If that wasn't enough to trigger me, in the next attempt I get basically one-shotted by another shield attack. Come on! Between that and the arena being shit, I was super mad at this point. To be honest, rewatching this footage almost all the time I get hit is just a stupid shield attack with like too much range. Obviously, as I get more mad, my performance gets worse, but I am too stubborn to quit, especially since I got so close already. Uh, I tried the horse again in a horrible attempt, but commit to it and start uh, learning how to fight him on the horse. It's a matter of waiting for him to attack, then sprinting to him and getting one hit in. It's a very slow process, but it feels safer, especially in respect to the stupid shield attacks. Unfortunately, I miscalculate and he kills Torrent, so I die on foot again. Uh, at this point, I've committed to the horse, though I'm still getting used to it. Also, gold horse guy bumps against the church and he comes down, which was cool. Again, he kills my horse and I die to, guess what, a shield attack. I then give it another on foot attempt because I can't commit to anything and this time the shield literally one shots me. So back to the horse, I decide not to summon Engval immediately and to start like near the church where there aren't as many rocks. Unfortunately, in trying to summon Engval later, gold horse guy kills me. Next attempt is similar, but I try to be more patient, and we finally make it. What a mess. I get this halberd that of course I can't use. Uh, it does scale with fate though, so I'll consider it. So anyway, that took 40 minutes for no good reason. Moving on. I want to buy everything from the merchant near the coast, but I don't have enough runes, so I regret this now, but I decided to go farm some runes around there. So I wipe the beach again. I also fight my first giant. I always feel bad killing the giants because they look so old. Like, like they live this long ass life and then I just arrive and kill them for like runes. Anyway, I decide not to buy the stuff from the merchant because <laughs> it's not worth it and I save my runes. I, I should probably consider getting a bow though. I'm entirely ignoring long range weapons for now. Waiting to have magic, but it's not working out exactly. So. I have this note that says there's someone in some ruins around Limgrave and I'm weirdly fixated on it. 
So I think maybe it's the ruins in this uh, swamp lake area. Let's go check there. I kill a bunch of bats on the way and I found this interesting hole in the ground. I, I don't I don't know, okay? It was interesting, I guess. I was pretty sure I remember the grace being around here near this precipice uh, and I kind of want to go down to the beach here. Very excitedly I recognize the painting I found last time in the artist shack and I get this stupid looking helmet from it. I'm not even interested in wearing okay looking helmets so I'm not about to go around looking like an idiot. I kill some more bats and then I finally find uh, the grace I was looking for. I tried jumping down, but uh, fall damage is completely arbitrary in this game and I get insta-killed. Just near there, there's a spot that kind of looks different. And from there, I actually managed to go down to the beach without dying. So I climb all the way down and I find a cave which leads me surprisingly to the item I couldn't get in the intro of the game. So that was pretty fun. I go back out and kill a crab. Then I go fight this guy I saw from above. Unfortunately, I suck and I get killed by his cool purple magic. I am sad about it because I almost had 1400 runes, so I want to go back to get them. But even though I jumped from the same place as before, this time I get killed. It's probably because I didn't break the fall by double jumping, but it's still like super dumb and I did not deserve it. I go back down anyway for revenge and kill the guy easily by fighting on horseback again. He gives me this uh, cool purple ash of war. I super jump back up, best mechanic of the game by the way, and continue exploring a bit. I found this guy under some ruins and he warns me about the lake having a dragon in it. I'm not looking forward to fighting the dragon just yet so fair enough I'm not going there. I run around a bit more, find a grace, decide not to fight the crabs because they are scary and then go back to the ruins I came here for in the first place. I call in Engval and he immediately goes to war with apparently nothing but actually a dragonfly. Okay Engval, thank you very much. I spy on these undead guys, they seem to be saying something like the feral flame of Akil. I don't think I've heard the name before but I should check the intro again. I find the basement of the ruins with uh, some rats in it and then a chest. To be honest I remember that this was gonna happen but I opened it anyway and got teleported to the Celia crystal tunnel. Why not right? Getting out of there was actually a bit of a problem because I didn't want to lose all my runes and while the actual miners seemed easy to kill these ugly centipede looking guys were not. More like senti hand, actually. In any case, first I fall to my death, then die a couple of times trying to be stealthy. Eventually I make it out with my runes, I level up some mana and teleport back to something more familiar. I remember the first time I got teleported somewhere in my first run was like absurd because it expanded the map a lot and I was super amazed it was bigger than I thought. Obviously I had no idea what was coming. So I go back to explore the runes in case I missed something and indeed I had. In a second basement, more hidden, I find the twin blade weapon which to be honest is a weapon I've always liked and I've always wanted to use but I don't know if this is the run for it. I meditate on what to do next and decide to go a bit towards the castle. Obviously I remember this ambush pretty well but I make a bit of a mess while handling it. With the help of my walls we end up making it and killing everyone but I did risk dying to the giant. Uh, there's this neat floating rock they probably should have fixed by now. Anyway I kill some more soldiers, get out the other side of the passage and I find a golden seed. After I fight some more wolves, I get to the Storm Stormhill shack where uh, Red Riding Hood tells me some pretty creepy things. Basically, she says that she came from across the sea with a bunch of people and they got grafted, which apparently means having your limbs taken and becoming a chrysalid, which is what she wants to do as well, but she's just a bit scared of like getting dismembered. She also mentions someone in a white mask, I don't know if that's Godric, in the castle. She gives me the ashes of a spirit jellyfish and asks me to say hi to the chrysalids in the castle for her. Literally. Pretty insane. Anyway, I find the imp key and I level up some vigor. 
I'm personally still fixated on the ruins mentioned in the note, so I go explore around the area for them. I find two dudes, and in a house in the woods, I find a tarnished called Bernal that offers to teach me, read, uh, sell me, some ashes of war. I buy the no skill art in case I want to use shields with like an old parry. I continue through the woods and stumble upon an enemy camp. I call in Engvall and we get to work. After cleaning most of the camp, I die in a super stupid way, getting stuck against the wall, which is uh, very frustrating. I go back and get sidetracked by this very strong bell sound that I can't place. After a bit, I figure out that it's a trap or some sort of alarm on the floor, which is <laughs> very cute. After killing everyone, I spend uh, way too long trying to jump on top of this tent for 200 runes, and in a chest I find a nice shield. I see this statue that I think points to a cave, and as expected, here it is. The death touched catacombs. Uh, the skeletons in it seemed a bit too strong though, so I decided to come back another time. I go back on the road and immediately get distracted by big talking vase guy, Alexander the Iron Fist. He wants me to smack his butt, so I do that, and then he tells me he's going to a festival at the Red Main Castle in Kaled. Good for you, man. Since I'm here, I kill a bunch of tentacle guys and try out my new cute purple Ash of War. Nothing particularly interesting here besides a giant I also kill, so I go back on the road. I arrive at a bridge where lurks a guy with his head in a metal cage that does not look comfortable. He's not very strong, though. On the other side of the bridge, there's a merchant playing a cool violin, and I buy the good stuff he has. I see a graveyard, and I prepare to fight some skeletons, risking to die to the mage. Here there's uh, yet another NPC uh, called D that warns me the village here has been touched by death. Is the village in the room with us right now, D? In any case, I get to the grace and take a break from a gaming. Later, I play some more and I decide to go back to a more familiar environment and go explore the cave in the lake near the Church of Allah. I find my way down unconventionally to not risk triggering the dragon and I waste some time killing these egg poison things and a crab. The cave is called Limgrave Tunnels and seems to have side openings as I go down the elevators. There's a bunch of miners, but I'm a class trader and I kill all the dutiful workers. There's lots of smithing stones around, which is nice. I explore some of the side stuff, but there's not all that much I could find. In the bottom, there's a door and on the other side, a stone digger troll, which is what I've been calling the giants. I die on my first attempt because even though he's vulnerable to fire, I couldn't, for the love of me, hit him with my spell because it has like a millimeter of range. I got a bit mad at that, but I got very mad at dying to him again because I really shouldn't have, but I couldn't land a single hit to save my life. It was so annoying. Of course, the third time was super easy and I get the talisman that enhances roars. I explore some side stuff and find some runes. Then I teleport back to the mysterious village touched by death. The guy wasn't actually hallucinating, and it is indeed there, though calling it a village is a bit of a stretch. It's one of those boss fights with the guy on the boat, which I remember from my first run of the game. It's pretty easy, and I just keep my distance every time he does anything, and me and Engvall wipe the village. Our spoils are a summon and a death truth, which gives me some lore about a rune of death that apparently was used during what i assume is the night of the black knives to manage to kill demigods which maybe wasn't possible before this rune of death then started spreading through the great tree's roots though i'm not sure if the great tree and the earth tree are the same thing in the quote-unquote village i also find a basement it kept by an imp, so I use an imp key. In the basement I find lots of cute turtles and a talisman that regenerates stamina faster. Nothing much else of interest except D makes an appearance to give me some more lore about the death root. He says he can introduce me to Gurank, the beast clergyman that apparently eats death root. D marks a gateway on my map and said he's got stuff to do, as uh, something is threatening the Golden Order, 
which he had deduced because he saw the mark of the centipede in the village. Anyway, the gateway is kind of near here, so I could go there. I continue up the road until the lighting suspiciously changes and Torrent ominously abandons me. Lo and behold, I get invaded by Anastasia Tarnished Eater, which uh, whoops my ass. I go back to get my runes and just run away to friendlier places, aiming for the sending gate. I kill a giant, continue downhill, or at least I wanted to, but I spot another cave, so instead I go there. Uh, it's the Gale Tunner, and here I find Vase Guy again, who tells me that the cave is actually a dead end. He also tells me that many warriors reside within him which I'm really trying not to take literally. Anyway, I go back out and actually downhill, try not to get too sidetracked. Uh, I kill some wolves, a beetle. The beetle drops me my first fate thing ever in the game, the Ash War Sacred Blade. I get to the third church of Marika, which is near the gateway, and Marina stops by for a lore moment. She apparently can channel Queen Marika. From what she says, Marika seems to have taken the grace from a lord and his warriors, so that they would leave the lands between and go in another land and die there. I am Thinking these warriors might be tarnished, since grace is kind of our thing. In the church I also find an upgrade for my flasks, and the flask of wondrous physique, which is a third flask that gives me buffs and that I can customize. At the moment I only have one crystal tear though, which uh, heals me. Since I'm here, I got to the gateway and am teleported to Greyol's Dragon Barrow, <laughs> where Gurank lives. I give him my death root and he gives me a talisman and a catalyst that scales from strength. This place is fairly far away, which is still super cool. I decide to go get the map of this other part of Limgrave and continue following the road. Before entering the woods, there's this glowing candlestick that makes a, a gold spirit appear and guide me through the woods. It's a bit long and boring, but I stealthily follow him, trying not to trigger the big bear, and uh, collecting the map on the way. It brings me to the ruins in the woods, where I have to actually fight another big bear, with the help of the skeleton ashes this time, which are nice because they keep respawning. In the basement of the ruins I find a talisman for charge attacks, which I put on. I get out and I'm distracted by a loud howl that I can't place until I find a message that tells me to look up. I don't know how to get the wolf boy attention though, so I just leave. In the map I spot something that looks suspiciously similar to some ruins and I still haven't fixed my obsession, so I want to go there. I go from the Dementor Horse Bridge because it looks faster. On the way, there's this carriage with two giants and a procession full of people behind it. I don't know what's up with it, but I kill everyone and get the great axe from inside the carriage. I might feel bad, but that doesn't stop me from killing the two giants as well. Uh, of course, I did that because of uh, pity and to put them out of their misery. I get to the fated ruins and kill the flowers in them. Then start a desperate search for a grace, not because I needed it, but because a message on the floor said that in the basement of the ruins there would be a strong foe, so I didn't want to come back here if I died. Obviously my search for the grace took me much longer than dying and running back would have, uh, and the miniboss behind the, the fog wall was just another potato head from before and I killed him very easily. In the next room I find Selene, and I tell her I want to let her magic, even though I actually have no intention of doing so. And before logging off, I take a moment to, to try some new clothes, and momentarily put on this ugly outfit. I then sit down at the Grace, and Melina decides this is the best time to talk to me again. She tells me that she was testing me, and she's finally ready to bring me to the round table hold. So I am granted access to the cool guy's hiding place, and I am transported there immediately in my stupid ugly clothes. God damn it.